So in this video, we're going to prove where the polar forms of velocity and acceleration come from. This is a velocity acceleration given in terms of components that are expressed in terms of r and theta rather than x and y. So let's say we have some object taking some path. And we're tracking this object from an origin here using r theta coordinates. So here's my horizontal line. This will be theta and my lengths here will be my different r values for a particle as it travels in this direction. So as we can see r is or theta rather is getting bigger. So here is our radial axis and here is our tangential axis, sometimes written as theta hat, or theta axis, you might say. So the r-axis is positive outwards from our origin. Let's mark this in red. And our theta axis is positive in the direction of increasing theta. So since theta is increasing in this direction, our positive theta tangential direction is in this direction. But during this video, we're really, gonna, we're really going to get an in-depth look at why these things are the way they are. So let's say our object is right here. We can express the position of this object as a vector. We'll call this r vector will equal some scalar r multiplied by a unit vector r hat. I'll make that smaller. r hat. And r hat is going to be this unit vector here. So don't forget, if I take a vector and multiply it by a scalar, it lengthens or contracts that vector. So we're taking that length of, vec of length one, r hat, this one, and lengthening it by r, which is just this length right here. And that creates for us this full position vector. So our r hat is here. Let me just make our full position vector in a different color here. So this will be yellow, and this guy here is just a scalar, just the scalar length from here to here. So of course, velocity is the derivative of the position vector. It's how much does your position vector change if time changes a bit. So we really have to take the derivative of this, my r vector. And that's a bit weird because we're so used to taking derivatives of this, you know, functions, you know? So how do we take the derivative of this? Well, it's going to be product rule. And here's why. Each one of these is an idea, a quantity that changes with time. And again, we're so used to seeing product rule, you know, in this context, two equations of x or of time getting multiplied by each other. And uh, we could all do the product rule steps for this. But both of these things we can agree change with time, you know. Up to this point, my r has been getting shorter, so that obviously changes with time. And of course, as we can see, that unit vector r has been changing as well. Changing direction, that is. Remember, a unit vector is always a vector of length 1. So its magnitude isn't changing, but its direction is changing. We can see that the angle of this r hat is increasing as our particle travels along that blue line. So since both of these quantities are basically, you know, equations of time, 
I mean, they're not quite equations of time, but they change with time. We'll have to do product rule. So derivative of this guy, dr dt. I mean, this r could really be an equation. It could be radical t or something like that. So the derivative of whatever that equation is. Now, the derivative of this guy is a lot harder. Well, don't forget, derivative really just means if I change x a bit, what is the change in y that results? So let's say our particle moved here. My new r vector would be here, and my new r hat vector would be there. So let's just draw this. I'll make it bigger so we can see what's going on. So here's my initial r hat. I've drawn it a little, a lot bigger, just so we can see what's about to happen. So that's the r hat for my initial position of that particle. And here is my final r hat. The r hat for when my particle is at this final point. So remember, the change in r hat with time. That's what we're going for here. Don't forget, this just means change. And change, that delta means our final minus our initial. That is what delta r hat means. And let me just put this in purple here. That dr, that delta r, will be this. And to show you why, let me add that initial r hat on both sides of the equation. Well, this is just vector addition right here. Notice that we have this and this vector getting added tip to tail to make this one. So that's just proof that, that delta r is that purple vector. So this will be the small angle that has changed. Remember, our particle moved a little bit from here to here. So a little bit of time went on, and a little bit of angle changed as well. So here's what happens next. Remember this pizza slice equation here. S is equal to R theta. Theta is this. R is this. And if we know the theta and the R and multiply them together, we can figure out our arc length right here. Well, just imagine making this angle very, very, very small. I mean, the same equation here applies. Take an r, take a very small angle, and what you'll get is a very, very small arc length. We're going to apply this to our situation here. The r is this length right here. And that length is 1, because these two lines right here are unit vectors. So I have 1 times d theta, so times d theta, which will get us this arc length right here, which is our dr. So equal to dr. So finally, we have calculated dr hat. And we had to go through some reasoning to get that, but this is what we're getting. 1 times d theta. Well, essentially, you know, just d theta. And of course, I've got to divide this dr by dt. Well, let me do that. dt, dt. And I'm getting d theta dt, the angular velocity, essentially. So we have this. That's good. 
we also have to realize that this quantity right here is not in, is not along my r hat axis anymore. It's really tangential to my r hat axis. It's in a tangential direction to my r hat axis, which makes it in the theta hat axis, the tangential direction. So, this quantity here will always be in the theta hat direction. So this whole thing is what happens when I take the derivative of this r hat unit vector. And just make sure you're okay with this because we'll be taking a lot of derivatives of unit vectors in this video. So I'll just write it d theta over dt in that tangential theta direction. All right, let me erase this stuff. So now that I know the derivative of each one of these pieces, I can just carry out my product rule. And in that way, I'll calculate the derivative of my position vector that tracks this particle. And in that way, I'll get the velocity of our particle, which will equal, I'll take dr dt multiplied by this guy. Remember, we're just doing product rule here. So this will be r dot in the r direction plus this guy times the derivative of the r hat. So that'll be r d theta dt, aka just theta dot, in the theta direction. So now let's focus on acceleration. Here's some arbitrary path right here. Let's say our object is here at the moment. And now we want acceleration. Of course, acceleration is just how much does our velocity vector change as time goes on. So we have to take the derivative of this entire thing, which means taking the derivative of this and this. So we'll take the derivative of this portion first. And again, we have another product rule. Let's just treat this as one unit. This guy is definitely changing with time, as is this. Now remember, at the instant shown, my r vector is here, and my theta vector is always tangent to it, my theta hat. And when I move here, same thing. My r has changed, my theta has changed as well. So calculating the derivative of this won't be too bad just because I have no vectors in here. Each one of these is just an equation, just a, a number. You know, r as a function of time, theta dot as a function of time, you know, something like that. So we can just apply our calc, calc 1 to this, and we'll do product rule. So for the derivative of this chunk, I'll do r times the derivative of the theta dot, which is theta double dot, plus theta dot times the derivative of r, which is going to be r dot. Got it. Not too bad. Now, the derivative of this unit vector here. We go through a similar process as when we were taking the derivative of that r hat unit vector. Let's call this initial and this final. Initially, my r, oh, my theta hat will be this guy, theta hat initial. And then, if I let time inch forward a little bit, and my particle moves to that final point, as you can see, my final theta hat will be pointing in this direction. But of course, each one of these is just a unit vector pointing in a different direction. Of course, each one of them is of length 1. 
So the derivative of theta hat with time is what I want here. So again, all this means is final minus initial. My final theta hat minus my initial theta hat. And again, I can visualize this as vector addition. I'll move that theta initial to the left hand side of that equation. And I get this. So apparently, if I take that initial theta hat and add the d theta hat, I'll get theta hat final. So again, make sure you're getting that this is vector addition here, tip to tail vector adding. My first one, theta initial, and I tip to tail the second one, the d theta hat, to get my resultant, my sum, right here. Just make sure you're seeing that. So again, I can treat this as one of our pizza slice equations. I'm only moving time forward a little bit, which means this is a very small angle here, d theta. Now take that d theta and I multiply it by r. Remember, my r here is just 1. So I have d theta times 1, and that equals my arc length right here which is my d theta hat. So I wanted d theta hat. I got d theta hat. Of course the whole thing is divided by a little bit of time. So I get this. But again we're not quite done yet. We have to notice that the change in that theta hat unit vector, what direction is it in? Looks like it's always going to be in the negative r hat direction. Remember, here is my positive r hat direction. This guy is in the negative r hat direction. So, negative r hat direction. So the answer to my question here, what is the derivative of that theta hat with respect to time? That's going to be negative 1 times d theta dt r hat, otherwise known as negative theta dot r hat. So I'll put that right here so we can be all ready to do the product rule of this term. So in taking the derivative of this chunk here, I'll apply product rule. Here's our theta dot times the derivative of my theta hat. So negative theta dot r hat of course, we can just map that out as negative r theta dot squared r hat direction plus, I'll, ke I'll keep this guy the same, so theta hat direction times the derivative of my r theta dot, which of course is r theta double dot plus theta dot r dot. All right, we're getting there. We're almost done. So we just took the derivative of this thing. So now, of course, we have to take the derivative of this part so we can get our full complete derivative of the velocity vector, aka the acceleration vector. So we want to take the derivative of this chunk here. So let me just write that down here. r dot times the unit vector in the r hat direction. Of course, product rule is required. 
because both of these quantities change with time. Derivative of this guy, a double dot. Derivative of this guy, well, we already worked this one out. So I'll just work this one very quickly. So how does our r hat unit vector change with time? Well, remember, dr hat is just r hat final minus r hat initial. We'll use the same diagram up here. Initially, my r hat is this way. Final, it's this way. Which means the delta will be in this direction. That'll be that will be d r hat. Of course, I have a very tiny angle here, d theta. So using that whole pizza slice thing, I have my angle times the length of my sides here, which is just one because these two r hat final and initial are just both unit vectors. So one, and that, by the pizza slice equation, is equal to that dr hat length. We got this. Of course, we got to divide it by a little bit of time. So dt, dt. This thing is just theta dot. And of course, one times theta dot is just theta dot. And of course, I have to remember that this this thing is going to be in this tangential direction here, which by definition here is the theta hat direction. So theta dot times the theta hat unit vector is the derivative of this r hat unit vector. And of course, now we'll just roll with the product rule. R dot times the derivative of my r hat, just theta dot in the theta direction, plus this guy, r hat, times the derivative of my r dot, which is going to be r double dot. OK, so I took the derivative of that guy, got this took the derivative of this guy, got this, so I just have to add these two things together to get my full derivative of my velocity vector. So let me just add these two things together. So I gotta remember, when I add these two things together, only these guys can add together, because they're both in the theta direction, and only these guys can add together, because they're in the r hat direction. Remember, that's how adding vectors are. I can't, I can't add a, a j hat and an i hat together. So doing my r's first, I have theta double dot and a minus r theta dot squared. Remember, these are the guys in the r hat direction. And then for the theta direction, I actually have two of these r dot theta dot quantities. So that's going to be 2 r dot theta dot. And then I have r theta double dot just by himself. So r theta double dot. And these things are getting added. And this is the tangential component of acceleration. So here is my formula for the acceleration of the particle, but given in terms of my r and theta polar coordinates. So this is the radial component of acceleration, and this is the theta component, the tangential component of acceleration. So definitely one of the more crazier proofs you'll see in engineering school. Hope it made sense. Feel free to ask me any questions you may have in the comments.